This is the Nothing Phone 2, one of the best looking smartphones I've ever taken a look at. But is it any good? Let's find out. Nothing has been making waves in the smartphone space as a relatively new company. Their first phone, aimed at the mid-range segment, brought a premium design, simple software, and solid performance for less than $500. I've never gotten a chance to try one out for myself, mainly because it wasn't officially sold here in the US. But from what I've heard, it strikes a good balance between quality and compromise. Fast forward a year to current day, Nothing is releasing their second smartphone. And this time around, they're looking to play ball against big flagship contenders like the iPhone 14, Galaxy S23, and the Pixel 7. But what exactly are you getting here, and will it be enough to compete with the rest of the pack? First of all, let's talk about this funky design. The see-through backing, which is a part of Nothing's signature design language, doesn't just look stunning in this pure white finish, but it's also functional thanks to its clever LED lighting array called the Glyph Interface. It's a real eye-catcher when all of it's on, and it even augments certain Android functions on the back of the phone, like your notifications, lighting while using the camera, and even visualizes your volume, which is handy for letting people know how much you aren't listening to them. Got him! These nuts. It's okay, they didn't hear me. If I'm being honest, this is more of a pretty visual gag more than it is actually useful as a feature. Though, I do wish they'd let you keep the lights on for the aesthetic flex, even if your battery life would tank. Looks aside, the Nothing Phone 2 also feels great in the hand. The subtle round glass back, matte aluminum frame, and flat glass on the front oozes premium. And it also feels very comfortable to hold as well. This unique design language also carries over into the software with Nothing OS 2.0, which runs on top of Android 13. Defined by monochromatic color schemes, or lack of color, dot matrix iconography, and clean fonts, all of this plays to the phone's striking looks and really rounds out this entire package. Dare I say, it's simpler and more thoughtful than what other companies do with their flavors of Android, which I like a lot. The OLED display is also flagship worthy. We're talking 6.7 inches at 1080p, that's a smidge below 400 pixels per inch, and it peaks at 1600 nits, which is enough to handle sunlight pretty well. But Ken, it's not 4K. Well, 4K D's nuts. <laughs> It even has a 120 hertz refresh rate, making the phone feel buttery smooth while navigating the interface. Reading articles, watching video, and playing games all look wonderful on the screen, even if it does fall short of what you get from something like the S23 Plus. But what does match the S23 Plus is the Nothing Phone 2's battery life. At 4700 milliamp hours, I've been getting a full day and a half of mixed use on a single charge. And when you do need to plug it in, the 45 watt quick charging gets you to 100% from zero in 55 minutes. <laughs> if you don't mind slower charging, it'll do wireless at 15 watts and will even reverse charge other devices at 5 watts. Not bad. There's also the cameras, which are plenty good across the board thanks to a balance of software computation and high-res sensors on the front and back. The 32 megapixel selfie camera looks solid with good skin tone reproduction, sharpness, and dynamic range. Then switch to the rear shooters and you'll find a pair of 50 megapixel sensors. Interestingly, the main sensor here is a Sony IMX, while the ultra wide is sourced from Samsung. There's a bit of mixing and matching here, but they both take well-rounded photos with natural looking color, and they also match each other pretty well. This is especially nice to see with the ultra-wide lens, which usually gets the short end of the stick with detail and resolution on other phones. Okay, so we've talked about everything except for the big elephant in the room. Not me, performance. <laughs> 
Where Nothing consciously used a mid-range chipset in their first phone, the second phone gets a pretty significant upgrade. Powered by a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, we finally get flagship performance in a Nothing phone, albeit one generation behind. While this might seem like a compromise on paper, it's hardly something that makes a real-world difference with most tasks. You'll see about a 30% dip in gaming performance compared to this year's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, found most notably in phones like the S23 and Zenfone 10. But unless you are prioritizing pure gaming performance, it's a trade-off that most people would probably be okay with, especially considering the price. That's because the Nothing Phone 2 retails starting at $599. This is the sweet spot considering devices like the Pixel 7 and that Zenfone 10 I mentioned earlier, which are two of the best phones this year, also hit that same price point. Dare I say, this might be my favorite phone this year, at least for now. What I'm about to say might sound like a load of bullshit, but there is something about the Nothing Phone 2 that makes it feel special. This isn't stuff you're going to quantify based off of a spec sheet or even experience through a YouTube video. But looking at this phone with its slick design, the feel in hand, and its minimal software approach, altogether, it's just pleasant to use and clicks in my head perfectly. I love it. It's hard to pinpoint exactly why this is, but it does feel like nothing put a lot of resources and thought into making this a meaningful smartphone. Consider that Nothing is a relatively small operation when compared to companies like Samsung, Google, and even niche players like Asus and Sony, which even further emphasizes their need to make the right compromises to keep their manufacturing and retail costs low. Really, despite the challenge, Nothing knocked the execution of the Phone 2 out of the park. Dare I mention Apple in an Android video? But f*** it. I think Nothing OS shares some of the spirit behind iOS's simplistic and straightforward design, which is to say it is very approachable. Only here, you have the flexibility and customization afforded by Android to add to it as you need. All things considered, I genuinely think that I can recommend the Nothing Phone 2 to basically anyone. Just keep in mind the last gen process if you're a gamer and need IP54 durability. When you dip your phone in Mountain Dew, you certainly will. And with an IP54 durability rating, it won't be the most resistant to dust or water if you're one to be clumsy with your phone. But let me know, what do you think about the Nothing Phone 2 in the comments below? And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel. Subscribe. Subscribe. Hey now, you're a rock star. Get the show on, get paid. Uh, haven't really been paying attention.